All right, so now we're ready for our pressure check. I have removed the alarm off of the circuit so that it doesn't go off while we're videoing, but normally you would, it would be going off. Normally your instructor is gonna sit here and cover it so it's not quite as loud, because if you cover it, it's not as loud and annoying. Um, but we do want it attached, and we can't, if we disconnect it, then we'd have to repressure check all over again. All right, uh, so I have um, closed my pop-off valve. I am closing the other end with my finger. I am now going to push on my flush valve and fill the circuit. Remember, the reservoir bag is meant, this is where the animal breathes from. So a lot of students push this and they don't see the valve, uh, the manometer moving and they think something's wrong. Remember that your bag needs to fill up first, especially if you have a really big patient and you have like a five liter bag on there, it can take a while. So don't panic. You may have hooked everything up just fine. Go ahead and just hold it, watch your bag fill, and then it starts to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and get just to about 40 and I'm gonna hold this nice and tight and I'm gonna watch it. There you go, zoom in. Give it a second. Sometimes it takes a minute to settle. So you saw how it was moving. It was moving because I was at 40, but now it's squeaking just a teensy weensy bit. It is still moving. What I do, my recommendation is always, I don't watch the needle. I pick a tick mark. I look at what tick mark it's at and then I can, you can see the needle move off of it. If you watch the needle, you forget what tick mark you were on. So it is very, very slightly leaking, um, which is great because then I can show you what you can do for that. If you do have a teensy weensy leak like that, you can turn your oxygen to 0 0.2, just this teensy weensy little bit, All right? 0 0.2. And now I'm gonna watch again. And now it's not moving at all. The reason why we can do that is because that is the permissible amount of a leak. That's the allowable amount a machine can leak and everyone still be safe is 0.2 liters per minute. So turn my oxygen off. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, I do not wanna let this go, okay? If I let this go, I'm gonna push a whole bunch of pressure through the circuit. Um, I'm gonna suck uh, um, uh, dust from the granules, which you can kind of see has happened to this valve. It's a little white. I'm going to suck dust up from the granules into this flutter valve. I can damage both of the flutter valves and you'll feel it. it'll be like a, like a big giant, like sucking action. Cause it's a vacuum essentially right now. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do first for two reasons, one, not to damage my machine two, so that I don't forget my pop-off valve is closed. The very first thing you do when you're done with your pressure check is not release here, but open your pop-off valve. So now because I've done that first, one, I don't have to worry that it may have been left closed, and two, I don't damage my circuit by having all that pressure that's built up just release through these valves. Because in order for it to come out this way, it has to come through these valves and it's gonna uh, damage everything. Now you can take your finger out, shake it off and do some exercising. See how red my hand is? This shows you, this. you do need some decent pressure here. Uh, so you can see how red my hand is and my finger has a little indentation. So it does require that, but it's air, right? Air seeps through everything. So you really need to have a nice, sometimes that's all the problem is with some students I've noticed is they're just not quite holding it off well enough. So that is how you pressure check um, for a rebreathing circuit on our anesthesia machines.